Good evening. I'm Bill Shadell of ABC News. It's my privilege this evening to preside at this, the third in the series of meetings on radio and television of the two major presidential candidates. Now, like the last meeting, the subjects to be discussed will be suggested by questions from a panel of correspondents. Unlike the first two programs, however, the two candidates will not be sharing the same platform. In New York, the Democratic presidential nominee, Senator John F. Kennedy. Separated by 3,000 miles in a Los Angeles studio, the Republican presidential nominee, Vice President Richard M. Nixon. Now join for tonight's discussion by a network of electronic facilities which permits each candidate to see and hear the other. Good evening, Senator Kennedy. Good evening, Mr. Shadell. And good evening to you, Vice President Nixon. Good evening, Mr. Shadell. Senator Kennedy, yesterday you used the words trigger happy in referring to Vice President Richard Nixon's stand on defending the islands of Kimoi and Matsu. Last week on a program like this one, you said the next president would come face to face with a serious crisis in Berlin. So the question is, would you take military action to defend Berlin? Mr. McGee, we have a contractual right to be in Berlin coming out of the conversations at Potsdam and of World War II. That has been reinforced by direct commitments of the President of the United States. It's been reinforced by a number of other nations under NATO. I have stated on many occasions that the United States must meet its commitment on Berlin. It is a commitment that we have to meet if we're going to protect the security of Western Europe. And therefore, on this question, I don't think that there is any doubt in the mind of any American. I hope there is not any doubt in the mind of any member of the community of West Berlin. I'm sure there isn't any doubt in the mind of the Russians. We will meet our commitments to maintain the freedom and independence of West Berlin. Mr. Vice President, do you wish to comment? Yes. As a matter of fact, the statement that Senator Kennedy made was that to the effect that there were trigger-happy Republicans, that my stand on Kimoy and Matsu was an indication of trigger-happy Republicans. I resent that comment. I resent it because it's an implication that Republicans have been trigger-happy and therefore would lead this nation into war. I would remind Senator Kennedy of the past 50 years. I would ask him to name one Republican president who led this nation into war. There were three Democratic presidents who led us into war. I do not mean by that that one party is a war party and the other party is a peace party. But I do say that any statement to the effect that the Republican Party is trigger happy is belied by the record. We had a war when we came into power in 1953. We got rid of that, we kept out of other wars, and certainly that doesn't indicate that we're trigger happy. We've been strong, but we haven't been trigger happy. As far as Berlin is concerned, there isn't any question about the necessity of defending Berlin, the rights of people there to be free, and there isn't any question about what the United American people, Republicans and Democrats alike, would do in the event there were an attempt by the communists to take over in Berlin.